Class 10th, let's start a very new chapter and the chapter name is The Judiciary, The Supreme Court. So be with your reader and turn page number 65. Let's start the class. We have two sets of government. Uh, we also call it dual government, right, or a federal form of government. That means the country um, where the two powers are there, central government as well as the state government. So, India has dual government. So, that government is also known by federal government, right? Uh, though there are two uh, powers, two sets of government, but um, the judiciary is act as a single unified uh, system or a, there is a single integrated judicial system in India, right? So, uh, judiciary is not like that. And uh, we have a single unified judiciary system. In other words, we can say all uh, the courts interpret and enforce the law, whether it's a state or a center. Uh, they follow the uh, laws made by the union parliament, right? Okay, the subordinate courts, that means the courts which are lower to the high courts and uh, supreme court, those courts and uh, those um, subordinate courts, district courts, high courts, all are subject to control of the Supreme Court. That means Supreme Court is the highest court in our country and the uh, law declared by the Supreme Court shall be uh, binding on all courts within the territory of India. That is why we have a single uh, integrated single integrated judicial system so that means um, like um, all the courts whether it's a supreme court high courts or uh, subordinate courts lower courts lok adalat or other uh, civil courts revenue courts all they um, have to follow the instructions they have to uh, like they have to give decisions uh, within the um, uh, like uh, within their lim limitations right or they have to give decisions and they have to act according to the supreme court only and the as well as the uh, laws made by the union parliament right so and uh, whatever the decision is given by the supreme court that is the final right so um, that is why uh, we call it a single integrated judici judicial system right now next is necessary of uh, a supreme court why we need supreme court so the first very first reason is india has a federal political system the supreme court is a federal uh, system the supreme court in a federal system has to interpret the constitutions so uh, federal political means um, I, I, as i told you there are the two uh, uh, sets of government central government as well as uh, the um, state government because India is a vast country so one power or one power cannot uh, control cannot check uh, or one power cannot control over a vast uh, country like India that is why it has a two sets of government and um, that is the central as well as the state government right so India is a federal country that is why the Supreme Court is uh, in a federal system has to interpret the Constitution. So, interpret means has to um, check. The, uh, the Supreme Court has to check on the validity or on the um, validity uh, of the law uh, passed by the Union Parliament and executed by the uh, ministers and the uh, ministers or the government right okay now next is um, second um, importance is the supreme court and the high courts protect the fundamental rights so this is very important topic just underline for the purpose of protecting the rights of citizens the supreme court and the high court may issue the writs or directions to concerned authorities so this is very important for the violation of uh, uh, fundamental rights of any citizen the supreme court and a high court can issue um, a legal document that is called writ 
so um, we um, so from this we come to know that the supreme court and the high courts are the protector of um, fundamental rights next thirdly is the supreme court gives a new meaning to the constitutions to meet the new situations so the supreme court helps the constitutions to adapt itself to the changed conditions of society right now next important topic is composition of the um, supreme court so composition means how many uh, members are there and what is the strength of the supreme court so all together together um, like uh, one uh, chief justice is there and 30 other judges are there so together all together there are 31 total judges so 31 total judges are there one is chief justice now when we come to the um, appointment of judges so appointment of judges are done by the president right so the chief justice of india is appointed by the president and the other judges 30 judges are appointed by the um, president but with the consultation of the chief justice right with the consultation of chief justice now here it's written the cji is required to consult the four senior most judges of the supreme court before making any recommendations to the president of india in this regard this came to be known as the we called it collegium system right so collegium system which allows a, a college of persons group of judges a bench of judges to appoint uh, judges so it's a you just underline collegium collegium uh, system this is very important like um, the cgi that means chief justice of india uh, before making any recommendations um, of like appointing judges or giving name to the um, president uh, he or she uh, must need uh, to consult with the four senior most judges right of the supreme court for the appointment of uh, or for any recommendation of the judges to the supreme court right now next is the criteria for the uh, appointment of the chief justice of india shall be uh, the seniority and now next topic is qualifications for the appointment uh, of a um, as a judge of a supreme court a judge must be a citizen of india right second is must have been served um, as a judge of a high court for at least five consecutive years right so the judge must be uh, to become the judge of a supreme court a person needs uh, to <clears throat> or the person uh, must have uh, been served as a judge of a high court for at least five years secondly uh, he or she must be an advocate of a high court for at least 10 consecutive years so 10 continuous year consecutive means continuous years third is uh, he or she must be um, a distinguished jurist in the opinion of the president so these are the qualifications to become the judge of the supreme court right now next is oath of office that is every judge before he enters upon the office make uh, uh, makes an oath that is um, that they will bear the true faith and uh, allegations to the uh, they will bear true faith and elegance to the constitutions will and secondly will uphold the sovereignty and integrity um, of India will perform the duties of his or her office without fear or favor or any affection or any uh, without any affections or any ill will and the oath of uh, the office is ad administered by the president of India now next is term of office and removal so term of office once um, a person uh, a judge uh, uh, once a person becomes a judge of uh, supreme court he or she can serve uh, 
for the uh, until he or she attains the age of 65 years this is point to be noted until a person um, attains um, the age of uh, 65 years he or she can serve as a judge of um, supreme court right a judge may be removed from his or her office by the president on the ground of proved misbehavior or incapacity so if um, the judge can also be removed before his term right but um, on the grounds of the reasons are on the grounds of misbehavior or incapacity right or unable to discharge his or her work and on that grounds uh, he or she can be removed by the president and that procedure is known as impeachment and uh, the procedure is written here when an address of each house of parliament passed by the majority of the total membership of that house and by majority of not less than 2/3 so majority should be not less than 2/3 of the total members present and voting right so and has been presented to the president now next is salaries and uh, um allowances of the judges the chief justice and the other judges are paid such salaries as may be determined by the parliament which is not written here uh, not mentioned here and their salaries are charged on the consolidated fund of india right okay so they not only get uh, salaries but they also get the allowances allowances means free rental charge free uh, traveling charge and uh, free um, your residence uh, there is no charge for the residence no electricity charge etc right and whenever they go or uh, they visit from one place to another they also get the allowance right okay next is independence and impartiality of the supreme court okay now the question is why is independent of uh, judges or why the judge uh, why the um, judiciary is kept independent of the control of executive and the Uh, legislature so there are various reason for this number 1 is like the independence of judges um, is uh, independence of judges is essential um, uh, for the functioning or uh, for the uh, functioning of a democratic constitutions right so that uh, the judges would not get influenced or um, uh, would not pressurized by would not get pressurized by the Uh, political leaders or powerful uh, leaders etc right and an independent judiciary is said to be the first condition of liberty right so the supreme court and the high courts are guardians uh, of the most pre uh, precious asset in a democracy that is the people's rights their independence is ensured by that is why their independence is ensured by various uh, provisions number 1 is appointment of judges number 2 is salaries and allowances are uh, salaries and allowances of the judges are charged on the consolidated fund of india and the uh, uh, third is security of tenure then we have no discussion with the respect to the conduct of any judge and punishment for the contempt of the court as well as the prohibition of practice after retirement so these are the provisions which make sure or which ensure the independence of the judiciary right okay now let's discuss about the first one that is the appointment of judges okay i already told you about the appointment of judges there are 31 judges in uh, let's talk about the supreme court Uh, there are thirty-one judges in the Supreme Court, and that um, Chief Justice is one Chief Justice and thirty other the judges. So that Chief Justice is uh, appointed by the President, and other thirty judges are appointed by the President with the recommendation of um, with the recommendation of the Chief Justice of India. And now that Chief Justice to make any recommendations for the or before recommendation. Uh, he needs to get consulted with the four senior most judges of india right okay so here um, the uh, neither the executive that is the uh, your 
यूनियन मिनिस्टर और मिनिस्टर्स और योर प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स और नॉर योर प्रेजिडेंट और नॉर द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया एक्टिंग ऑन हिज ओन कैन हैव अ फुल कंट्रोल ओवर दी जजेस दैट मीन्स इन द अपॉइंटिंग ऑफ जजेस राइट बिकॉज प्रेजिडेंट अपॉइंट्स दी जजेस सो प्रेजिडेंट विल हैव ही नीड्स टू कंसल्ट the uh, the president needs to consult with the chief justice and chief ju- justice also cannot alone make the recommendations the chief justice uh, justice of india needs to consult four other senior most judges before appointment before any recommendation right so the neither uh, prime minister nor the executive or not um, the chief justice <coughs> they have uh they don't have full control over the uh, judges or the appoint appointing of judges in another word we can say neither uh, the political bias nor personal favorism would play any part in the appointment of judges it has enhanced independence of judiciary right okay now next is security of tenure as i told you that once a person becomes uh, the judge of the supreme court then he or she can serve uh, for until he or she attains the age of 65 years so only uh, till 65 years uh, until unless he or she attains the age of 65 years that means that is a security of tenure so that means what uh, now that judge Uh, can only be uh, removed by the president on the grounds of uh, on the ground of proved misbehavior or incapacity right and that is uh, that process is known as impeachment as i already told you so the word proved is very significant very important i told you the proved mis- misbehavior or proved incapacity so it means that an address can only be presented after an allegation has been thoroughly examined by some impartial tribunal clear so one cannot be removed one cannot remove from his or her office until unless it is uh, proved right okay so here proved is very important uh, key term now next is salaries and uh, are charged on the consolidated fund of india so the judges Uh, are getting handsome salaries as well as the allowances they are getting and uh, uh, now uh, there shall not be a right to uh, their disadvantage during the term of office moreover they are charged on the consolidated fund of uh, india and are not subject to vote of parliament the salaries of judges cannot be reduced except during periods of financial emergency unless until there is national or uh, national or uh, internal aggressions or uh, any financial um, emergency their salaries are never reduced right so regarding the salaries and allowances i already told you now next is no discussions with the uh, res- with respect to the conduct of any judge so there shall be uh, um, no discussion uh take place in the parliament with respect to the conduct of the um any judge in the discharge of his or her duties right except when a motion for his removal is under consideration now the conduct of a judge cannot ordinary uh, ordinarily be a subject um, matter of discussion inside legislature so in the parliament uh this matter will not be taken as a matter of discussion right or never be taken as a matter of discussion um now next is punishment for the contempt of court genuine criticism uh, criticism of a judgment is allowed but nothing should be done to lower the authority of the court or dignity of the court the supreme court has a power to punish for the contempt of itself so um, no one can lowers the um, or uh, lowers the dignity of the court or lowers the uh, authority of the court so the supreme court has the right to punish those who uh, disrespects the court 
right now next is prohibition after uh, of practice after retirement a retired judge of a supreme court cannot um, practice any case in any court or any tribunal in india this ensures that the judges while making decisions would not be unduly influenced by their former colleagues or superiors prohibition of practice after retirement that means that um, the judges the retired judges or the judges who have uh, been just uh, retired from his or her post they are not supposed to practice after the retirement right so this is to ensure that the judges while making the season would not be unduly influenced or favor by uh by their former or favor to someone or uh, influenced by their former colleagues or uh, superior seniors right okay now children uh, that's all for today we'll continue this uh, chapter chapter number 4 the union um, judiciary in the next video till then stay safe stay healthy thank you